Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Logan Schindelman? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the disappearance, then offer my analysis. Logan Schindelman was born in Olympia, Washington, on June 27, 1996. His father was an engineer who lived in Saudi Arabia and visited Washington on business. It would appear as though, during his visit, he became involved in another type of business. He had a brief romantic relationship with a woman named Hannah, and she became pregnant as a result. This is how Logan came into existence. The engineer left the United States before Logan was even born. It's not clear if Logan's father even knew Logan existed. Logan's mother decided to move to Seattle for a while in order to go to school and study art. Logan's maternal grandmother, Jenny Schindelman, became the legal guardian of both Logan and his older half-sister, Chloe. They live with Jenny in the city of Tumwater, which is just south of Olympia. Hannah eventually moved back to Olympia, but Logan continued to live with his grandmother in Tumwater. In high school, Logan had success academically and athletically. He played on the high school football team. Logan had a number of friends. He was considered popular and outgoing. Around the time he graduated from high school, Logan started isolating himself from his friends. They weren't sure what happened to him. His behavior was out of the ordinary. They reached out to him several times on social media. He would read the messages, but he never responded. Logan initially planned on attending Eastern Washington University, which is about 308 miles east of Tumwater. Several of his friends were planning on going to the same university, therefore they would all be together there. Before fall arrived, Logan changed his mind. He decided to attend Washington State University in Pullman, Washington, which is about 70 miles south of Eastern Washington University. Perhaps he did this to avoid having contact with his friends. During his time in college, Logan's performance academically was nothing like it was in high school. He was much more interested in having fun. He did not complete assignments, and he missed many classes. Logan was not able to return after his first year. His grades were insufficient. He moved back to Tumwater and once again lived with his grandmother, Jenny, and his half-sister, Chloe. Logan worked at various jobs. For example, he spent some time in a laundry facility and worked on a five-acre farm owned by his great-aunt. According to his grandmother, Jenny, Logan was using a lot of marijuana, and he was experiencing paranoia. For example, he thought people were looking at him through his bedroom window. Logan spent a good deal of time in his room. He met a few people online, including on a dating app, but he did not meet them in person. Now moving to the timeline of the disappearance. On May 19, 2016, at around 7.30 a.m., Ginny was home preparing for work. 19-year-old Logan came into the house. He had been out all night. His grandmother asked him where he had been. He told her he was just driving around. During their conversation, Logan indicated that he had an epiphany, but he did not want to talk about it. Ginny described Logan as nervous, and it appeared as though he was on some kind of mission. She informed Logan that they could continue this conversation in the evening. When Jenny returned home from work, Logan was not there. She tracked his cell phone to Olympia, near where his mother lived. Jenny assumed that Logan was visiting his mother, Hannah. In reality, Logan did not visit his mother that day. Hannah would later say that she did not see him. On the next day, May 20, when Logan still had not returned home, Jenny drove to the Thurston County Police Department to report him missing but there was nobody at the police department at that time. The facility was closed during the weekend. She didn't feel as though the report was really an emergency. Therefore, she waited and reported Logan missing on Monday, May 23, when the police station reopened. After being told that Logan was missing, the police discovered that Logan's black 1996 Chrysler Sebring convertible had been found on Interstate 5 at milepost 92. This is about 10 miles from where Logan lived. The vehicle had been impounded on May 20, the day after Logan failed to return home. 
Several items were found inside his vehicle, including a cell phone, wallet, car keys, a water bottle, a few bags of food, $25 in cash, his driver's license, and his debit card. There was no sign of a struggle in the vehicle. The police started searching for Logan. They looked around the area where his vehicle had been found, but there was no sign of him. Logan's cell phone data was accessed by the police in order to determine where the phone had been on May 20. The phone had made its way south on Interstate 5, then went north on the interstate, before once again changing course and heading south. At 3.45 a.m., it stopped where Logan's vehicle was found. All activity from the phone ended, and it was never used again. The police realized that a witness had called 911 on May 20 and reported something relevant to Logan's disappearance. The witness saw a vehicle that matched Logan's crossing lanes of traffic on Interstate 5, not far from milepost 92, where his car would later be found. The witness told the police that the car drifted across the interstate and hit a concrete barrier in the median, almost like no one was driving at all. The driver moved over to the passenger side, exited the vehicle out of the passenger door, and ran into the woods. The police noted that there were two potential concerns with this report. One, the witness said that the driver who fled the vehicle was a white male. Logan was multiracial. And two, there were bags sitting upright on Logan's passenger seat. If someone had moved from the driver's seat to the passenger seat in a hurry, they may have knocked those bags over. The police became aware of another report that could be connected to Logan's case. On May 21, a witness reported seeing a black male on a road not far from where Logan's car was found. The male was missing his pants and stumbling around. The police thought that maybe this was indicative of drug use, not only due to the man's behavior, but also because the area was known for being drug use challenged. The police were not able to find the partially naked individual who had been spotted, therefore they did not know if he was Logan or not. In June of 2017, just over a year after Logan disappeared, another witness came forward. She indicated that on May 20, 2016, she observed Logan's vehicle on the shoulder of Interstate 5 near Exit 95. He was standing near the back of the vehicle with two white males. When she drove back the other way in the evening, she noticed that Logan's car was still there. No one was around, and the hood was open. The witness would later provide a description of the two white males to the police, the police were not able to identify these individuals. This witness's report is not necessarily inconsistent with the other report from the man who saw the vehicle hit the median. These reports occurred at two different times. At the time making this video, Logan is still missing. There have been no significant leads since 2017. Now moving to my analysis. There have been several theories generated about the disappearance of Logan Schindelman. Let's take a look at a few of them. Theory number one is that Chloe's boyfriend was somehow involved. He and his two children lived in Ginny's house. He pleaded no contest to felony assault in 2013. Chloe's boyfriend was arrested again in October 2016 for allegedly violating probation. There was a lot of tension between Logan and Chloe's boyfriend, but there is no evidence connecting the boyfriend to Logan's disappearance. The police excluded Chloe's boyfriend as a potential suspect. Theory number two has to do with Logan's journey of self-discovery. Logan had connected with some of his black relatives not long before leaving for college. He was interested in exploring his racial identity. He wanted to better understand the cultural values of his various relatives. This theory suggests that Logan ran away to discover himself, to figure out who he was in the world. It is reasonable to believe that Logan struggled being multiracial in an area that was predominantly white, but most people on a journey of self-discovery do not disappear for years. There are easier non-disappearing ways to contemplate one's identity. He was not going to create a stronger connection with his family by vanishing. Theory number three is that Logan fell in with the wrong crowd, perhaps due to his marijuana use. Maybe he angered some drug dealers or other dangerous people and they murdered him. A lot of people use marijuana without being the victim of homicide. Murder-free marijuana experiences are actually pretty common. One could argue that they are the most popular form of marijuana use. There's not really much evidence supporting the foul play theory. There is evidence supporting the idea that Logan was having difficulty regulating 
his use of drugs, like the report about the partially naked man stumbling near where Logan's vehicle was found, but that's not enough to indicate homicide. One could argue that the white man seen running away from Logan's car could have been Logan's killer, but I think the witness was probably mistaken. The witness probably saw Logan running away from Logan's car. Theory number four is that Logan ran away without anyone's assistance. There are a few versions of this theory. For example, he ran away and brought an end to his life, he wanted to start a new life, or he didn't have any plan and he simply died from exposure or some other cause after running away. There's quite a bit of evidence supporting this theory. Logan didn't really have any friends. There's no evidence of a struggle in his car. Nothing was missing from his car. There's not much reason to believe that anyone except Logan was in his vehicle. If no one else was there, then Logan probably disappeared on his own, because it appears as though he was last spotted at his vehicle. This is consistent with his proclamation that he had an epiphany. He was acting with a purpose. Logan was controlling his own destiny. As far as which version of this theory makes sense, I'd be surprised if Logan left to start a new life. I doubt he could have remained hidden for this long, and he probably would have taken more belongings with him if a new life was his objective. For example, Logan was allergic to peanuts and was supposed to carry an EpiPen with him at all times, but he didn't have it with him. I think it's more likely that he brought an end to his own life or simply ran away without any plan and ended up in trouble. When looking at all the theories, I think that theory number four is the most likely. Logan disappeared of his own volition and something unfortunate occurred as a result, possibly something fatal. After this, I would go with theory number three, foul play was involved, then theory number one, Chloe's brother was somehow involved, and finally, theory number two, Logan went on a journey of self-discovery. Moving to the last question, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. In the time leading up to his disappearance, Logan used a lot of marijuana. His grandmother thought that perhaps it was making him paranoid. Marijuana can lead to feelings of paranoia, but another possibility here is that Logan was becoming paranoid without the help of marijuana. So the paranoid feelings and the marijuana use were unrelated, or perhaps Logan used marijuana in an effort to alleviate various mental health symptoms, including paranoia. I think a good case can be made for the idea that Logan was developing schizophrenia. This is a severe mental disorder characterized by delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, disorganized behavior, and negative symptoms like diminished emotional expression. Typically, the full expression of the disorder does not appear suddenly. Rather, an individual who is developing schizophrenia first has prodromal symptoms. These are nonspecific symptoms that can be observed before the first episode of psychosis, that is, before the first break from reality, the first time the person has hallucinations and or delusions. Nonspecific means that they don't definitively point to any particular diagnosis. So if a person has prodromal symptoms, they are not necessarily going to develop schizophrenia. However, the symptoms represent important warning signs that should always be taken seriously. There are several prodromal symptoms of schizophrenia that Logan appeared to have, at least to some degree. For example, a lack of insight, decreased functioning, not coping well with stress, vague depressive feelings, paranoia, a tendency to isolate, and exhibiting bizarre, odd, strange, or unusual behavior. There are a few other prodromal symptoms that Logan may have had, but there's not enough information to know for sure. For example, irritability, fatigue, sleep disturbance, anxiety, frequent daydreaming, concentration problems, boredom, and impulsivity. Other prodromal symptoms like being aggressive and disruptive do not appear to align with Logan's behavior. When stepping back and looking at the overlap between Logan's behavior and the prodromal symptoms of schizophrenia, it appears as though he may have been developing this disorder. Of course, there's no way to know for sure, but I think it is a possibility worth considering. I think what may have happened here is that Logan's first episode of psychosis caused him to act erratically. The epiphany of which he spoke may have been a grandiose delusion or something connected to paranoia. As the symptoms worsen, Logan drove up and down the interstate and eventually ran away from his vehicle. 
the potential sighting of him stumbling around partially naked may not have been related to drugs, but rather psychosis. Now moving to my final thoughts. Most people who develop progenital symptoms of schizophrenia will never develop the disorder. In addition to schizophrenia, the symptoms could point to cluster A personality pathology, some other difficulty, or nothing at all. With this in mind, it becomes easy to dismiss the symptoms, especially when they occur in someone's early years, when they might be going through a tumultuous time developmentally. In some missing persons cases, there are people to blame, but not in this case. This was probably just an unfortunate mental health crisis, which would have been almost impossible to predict. Those are my thoughts in the case of Logan Schindelman. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.